There's the hill. Pretty phantasmagorical. Pretty what? Pretty phantasmagorical, with an F, which means more fantastic than fantastic. <laughs> Rubbish, it's PH, as in phantasmagoria, a series of illusions or phantoms. <laughs> There's the avenue. The Milbury Stones. The books say they were erected about 3000 BC. Even earlier. So they're old in the Stonehenge? Probably. By the time Stonehenge was completed, people have been worshipping here for a thousand years or more. Worshipping what? The sun, maybe? Here's the circle. With the village inside it. Scary. What is? Not known anybody. Well, we soon will. Suppose they all turn out to be nutters. Do we have to stay the whole three months? <laughs> yes, we do. If I don't complete my research, the university's going to want their grant back. Unless we've already spent half of it. Dad, stop! Once again, Mrs. Crabtree, I'm very sorry. I just didn't see you. Never mind, sir. No harm done. We didn't expect to be met. Oh, well, Mr. Hendrick's idea, sir. He thought you might not find us so easily. That's very kind of him. And you? No trouble, sir. After all, we didn't have you here. I'd have no one to look after, would I? Yeah, true. By the way, sir, this stuff arrived yesterday. I told the men to leave it where it is for the time being. One, two, three. Yes, it's all present. No damage, is there, sir? China, would it be? Or glass? Uh, no, Mrs. Crabtree, not China. Or glass. Oh. Well, you'll be wanting your tea, I expect. And some of my chocolate cake. Hmm? Um... I've never known you refuse an offer like that before. Oh, yes, please. <laughs> You'll get used to it. Oh, Matt, go and get the rest of the cases in the car, will you, so I keep this lot? Right. <laughs> uh... Dad? Yes, what is it? Oh, nothing. I'll get the cases. Oh, I'm sorry. Magnetometer. No doubt. An instrument for measuring magnetic fields. Magnetic fields? Where are they? A magnetic field is a field of force that surrounds a magnet. Oh, you've got no magnets here. That's where you're wrong, Mrs. Crabtree. You've got at least 53. The stones, the standing stones. Each one a source of great magnetic power. The stones? I never heard that. How do you know? That's my job. Well, the stones. Well, I never. So you've come to measure our stones. Well, I never. Shall I show her the picture, Dad? Yes, good idea. See if one of the locals recognises it. Mrs. Crabtree. Come and look at this. <gasps> Good Lord, 
Mrs. Crabtree. That was just the effect the artist was after. Hardly an auspicious start to your tenancy, Professor Brick. Uh, Mr. Hendrick. Uh, just so. Not a good time for the landlord to appear, hmm? <laughs> <laughs> Have we another pot, Mrs. Crabtree? Oh, yes, sir. Well, then, if you've quite recovered. A tea for three, please, Mrs. Crabtree. And I rather think you could do with a cup yourself. Yes, sir. Happy day, sir. Now, what was all that about? That. Where did you get this? My son found it in a junk shop. Your name, young man? Matthew. Matthew Brake, sir. What made you buy it? I just knew I wanted it. It was about a year ago, before I knew I was coming here. Now I think it looks like the country round this village. There's the hill, and that would be the start of the avenue. Yes, there is a resemblance. What do you suppose it represents? Some ancient ceremony, perhaps? Dad says Milby could have looked like that in the old days. It's very raw, powerful. Have you ever seen anything like it? Nothing. It's very early, good groundwork on wood panel, when there's an inscription, um, quad non... Quad non est, similo, dissimiloque, quad est. Which means? Something like, I deny the existence of that which exists. Excellent. <laughs> With or without help? With. <laughs> I deny the existence of that which exists. Remarkably futile statement, don't you think? like refusing to believe what one knows to be true. Right, Matt. Boring business chat coming up. Explore. Everyone here is very friendly. I'm sure you'll find someone to show you around. Hello. Hello. Come here for a ride. Where to? Oh, just round the village. Show you the sights. I haven't got a bike. Well, oh, there's one in the shed. I read your paper on megalithic lunar observatories. I was very impressed. Checking my references as a tenant. Oh, my dear fellow, don't be so modest. Anyone with the faintest interest in astrophysics has heard of Adam Brake. We must have more than a faint interest to have come across the observatory's paper. I dabble, you know. It's difficult not to speculate inside the circle. Odd, that. Odd? Matthew coming across that picture. Perhaps the picture came across him. Happy day! Come on! When your work here is finished, you'll stay. I'm afraid I can't afford to. I have a growing boy to bring up. My wife died two years ago. I'm sorry. I have Matthew. He's a great consolation. How did he... Um, how did he take it? Very well at first, but... But what? Well, I found it was unwise to let him handle any of my wife's possessions, her books, things like that. He began remembering incidents with her in incredible detail. It's morbid, really. Perhaps the change you've seen will help. I hope so. Another reason for your staying on. What's his future? Astrophysics, probably. I think he's inherited some of my... Intelligence? Uh, curiosity.
Happy day, Mrs. Warner. Happy day, Bob. Cornets for two. Mass ice cream. No, Bob, no thanks. Two, please, Mrs. Warner. Vanilla? And chocolate. Vanilla and chocolate. All right. Hello. Hello. Just arrived. Why were you staring through our window? I heard you were coming. What? New people. We need new people here. Why? We've got to stick together. My trees. Who's she? That's Sandra. Her mum looks after the museum. She's strange. Yes, I know. She says funny things. Happy day, boys. Happy day, Mrs. Warner. That's because she's not a happy one. What's a happy one? Someone who's happy, of course. How long do you prefer staying here? Oh, the university's given me three more months' research. Three months? Uh -huh. Then my grant runs out. <laughs> Doesn't sound a very long time for much serious research. Oh, that's the end of a year's work. Ah, oh, George, I've brought you a new customer, Mr. Brake. He's with us for a while. Our drinking man, I hope. I'll have a whiskey. Two large ones, if you please. Right, sir. Margaret Smythe, another new arrival. She's curator of the museum. Ah. Widowed, one daughter. Margaret, this is Adam, Adam Brake. Poor fellow doesn't know anyone in the village and wants to be taken under your wing. Why mine? I think he likes the look of the feathers. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, I think I'm going to need your help. I'm doing some research on the circle of the stones. I know. A village is a small place, Mr. Adam. Um, may I? I'm as up-to-date as is academically possible on the circle, but... Well, I'm sure you must have some theories. Oh, yes. I've plenty of theories. I'd very much like to hear them. No. Come to the museum tomorrow. We can talk then. Sherry. And, uh... Etc. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome to Milbury, Mr. Brick. Indeed. And may I include you both in my usual toast? Old times and new. No, that's not. This one's a beauty. What's that? Oh, it's that's terrible. It's supposed to fly. Hey, that's terrible, Mavis. You should sit there for the moment. Thanks. Hello. Kevin! <laughs> Oh, new boy, what are you going to do about that, Ben? Break your leg. Hey, go on. Yeah. Stop <laughs> it. Had to find out if he was human. Of course he is. He only arrived yesterday. Good. One of us, then. What do you mean? Not one of them. One of them? Don't be silly. He doesn't know the difference. The difference between... Happy day, children. Happy day, Happy day. Now, before we begin, I want you to welcome a new member of the class. Stand up, Matthew. This is Matthew Brake, who's joining us for a few weeks. Matthew's father is an astrophysicist. Anyone know what that entails? Mm -hmm. Bob? Study of matter and energy in relation to the stars, miss. Rubbish. Correct, Matthew? Yes, miss. Now, anyone have any problems with the prep I set you yesterday? Bob, would you like to show us how you solved it? after our other friend, so here's something else to be thinking about. Right? 
Off you go. Miss Clegg? Oh, not you, Matthew. We'll start you on something else, shall we? Just to see how you get off. Some of us have difficulty even with the simple stuff, don't we, Sandra? And I suppose it's no use asking to see your work, Jimmo. Figures are not your strong point, are they? Have you any idea what one and one mean? Gee, that's a farm a miss. Explain yourself. Well, on a farm, put one and one together, you usually get a third. <laughs> you find that funny, Daddy? Sorry, miss. Seems we've drawn another blank. Think you can do better, Matthew? I'll try, miss. See how you get on. Anyone finished? Good. Good morning. Oh, not happy day? <laughs> Definitely not. Happy day sounds more like a password than a greeting, doesn't it? Yes. What are these? Oh, they're ley lines. Ley lines, are they indeed? <laughs> Tell me you believe in all that sort of thing. I try to keep an open mind. Oh, come on. Invisible straight lines that are supposed to connect ancient sacred places, churches, mark stones, barrows. And stone circles. <laughs> you're my idea of hell. Write out 100 ley lines. <laughs> <laughs> I take it you're not a believer. I'm a scientist. Scientists need proof. Mm. Well, I can't offer you that, I'm afraid. But there are some interesting theories. Some people even believe that ley lines are power cables. And that the sacred places they connect are temples, built by Neolithic man as a storehouse of psychic energy. So, Milbury's full of psychic energy, is it? Who traced out these lines? Oh, various lay hunters. People who spend all their spare time looking for them. Some I worked out for myself. How many are there? Fifty-three. Interesting. Why? How many stones are left standing in the circle? Fifty-three. Well done, Matthew. I can see it won't take you long to catch up. Catch up? With the others? Well, I think they're a bit above my standard. Oh, nonsense. There's no knowing what you'll achieve once you're... Once I'm what, miss? Once you've settled down, Matthew. How long have you been here? Oh. It seems like ages, but it's been hardly any time at all. Just six weeks. You obviously enjoy it. I enjoy the work. I'm trying to catch up with the facts. It's the first time you've curated, is it? First time I've had to earn my own living. Luckily, I had a degree in archaeology and a colleague of my husband's on the selection board, so... So what don't you enjoy? I don't enjoy being alone. You miss your husband? No. No, I mean, you don't understand. You haven't been here long enough. Well, do you mean the happy day natives are unfriendly? I mean, I'm glad you're here. I've been dropped. I'm not in the team. Oh, what did you expect? I scored twice. Marvellous, isn't it? Top scorer and you get dropped. You argued with decisions. That's no way to be happy. Happy? That striker deliberately fouled me and the ref took no notice. Well, perhaps he was unsighted. Perhaps he was stone blind. Well, you certainly told him so. Did it make you feel better? I'll tell you what would make me feel better. Go on, then. Thump me. <gasps> See? Didn't solve anything, did it? Mrs. Smythe, would you care to summarise? Certainly, Professor. Hmm. The stones are undressed sarsen, weighing approximately 40 tonnes each. There are 100 in the original circle, of which 53 now remain. Two avenues of stones used to extend from the circle, uh, one to the south-east, which terminates in the barrow on the hill known as the Hackpen, uh, Serpent's Head or Sanctuary, and the other to the south-west, which no longer exists. 
These avenues form the head and tail of the solar serpent, the symbol of inner truth. Bravo. Not bad for a beginner. Walking encyclopedia. <laughs> no, I've just got good eyesight. What? Oh. <laughs> yes, 40 tons. Wouldn't like to get caught under that. Now, someone was caught centuries ago. Mm -hmm. The barber surgeon. He was helping to bury one of the stones when it crushed him to death. And he was found? Well, earlier this century. When they re-erected the sarsen, his skeleton was found underneath. Why were they burying the stone? Local superstition. The villagers believed that if they buried one of the stones each year, it would bring them luck. <laughs> Didn't do much good for him, though, did it? <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for the guided tour. I must uh, get back to my work. What's first on your schedule? First to make a schedule. And then I must do some electronic dowsing. Find out where the fallen stones are and things like that. Well, there's no need to douse. There are concrete posts marking their positions. I prefer to do my own research. Anyway, I like playing with expensive sonar equipment. Adam, mm -hmm. would you do something for me? Of course. Touch one of the stones. What? I just want to see if you're the kind of man I think you are. What sort of man is that? No, please. Come with me, please. Want me to touch it? Yes, would be so violent. Oh, look, here's some water. This is no time of day to be taking a bath. In that cupboard you'll find a bottle of scotch and a glass. A large glass. On yourself. No, no, I don't like it. I hate to ask, but what happened? You don't know. You don't remember. I'm not sure what I remember. It was my fault. I took you out to the circle and asked you to touch a stone. To see if you're the kind of man I think you are. Yes. What did that mean? A man of sensitivity. I'm so confused. You're confused? Where's Matthew? On his way back from school, I should think. But sensitivity to what? When I first came to Millbury to take over the museum, I read a fringe lunatics book about the psychic force in standing stones. A force that only certain people Perceptives, I think the writer called them, could feel. Well, I touched that same stone and I felt something, a shock. But nothing like the sort of shock you must have felt. But that wasn't psychic force. That was electromagnetic energy, a perfectly natural phenomenon. Well, even though you were earthed and so was the stone. 
There must be some perfectly simple explanation. There is. For what? Psychic forces don't obey the same laws as electromagnetic ones. <laughs> Come on, Margaret. There's nothing psychic about residual magnetism. You don't have to have special powers to receive a common or garden electric shock. Well, it was hardly common or garden. You flew through the air with the greatest of ease. Yes. There was certainly a great deal of energy there. I can't wait. Matthew, are you all right? Are you hurt? No, Dad. I've just fell off my bike. You certainly made a mess of that bike, didn't you? It's never exactly Tour de France. Well, if it's on the cottage inventory, you can pay for it out of your own allowance. Well, maybe I can sell the wreckage. The Tate Gallery might buy it. <laughs> Dad, mm -hmm. this stone doesn't look upright. Neither do the others. Well, what do you expect after 4,000 years? Now, I'll leave this, I'll do it. Uh. Reading, will you? Yeah. Hey. Come on. Die. Come on. Good. Come in. What do you want? I need your help. You put that in my snare. Seemed a good idea to use it as a post box. You let my supper go. Supper? Come in. Oh, no rabbit for a supper tonight, die. No coon if I die. Set enough for a pair of pigeon, that's it. Or rooks. Well, how about a piece of chicken? Tomatoes, bread and cheese, good cheddar and fruit. Got a bit of cider. Help yourself. Sexton? No, oh, Theodolite. What do you know about Theodolite? Who cooked this chicken? Mrs. Crabtree, what's wrong with it? How should I know? I'm no vet. I'm certainly dead. Hmm. Who is there? Proper support for a plain table. Know anything about surveying? I know. Next time, a bit of tarragon under the skin, wild garlic and an old potato inside. Keep it moist. Well, do you? Yes. If I haven't forgotten, who's used to be a miner. A coal miner? Coal, gold. I've dug for everything. <coughs> dug holes in the water for fish I have. Dug holes in the earth for bones. What do you want to survey? The circle, the stones. Be 
and then don't meddle with the stones. Got any nuts? No. The stones all seem to lean slightly towards the centre. My father reckons it's weathering or subsidence. But I was wondering, do they all lean at the same angle? And if they do, what then? I don't know, I'm not sure. Just knows ye. Leave the stones alone. But if they do align, it'll be too much to pass them off as coincidence, won't it? And if they don't, if your father's right, what then? Well, want to buy a homemade theodolite, one careful owner? Well, you need to finish off your sight machine. Well, that's why I need your help. I thought if you could bodge your telescope into it, do your lenses detach? No, no chance of that, none. Listen, Di, there's lots of important figures my father and I have to collect. The only way we're going to get this particular set is if you help me. Please. Um. Just for a day or two, mind. Thanks. There's so much to do before we leave. Leave? What do you mean? Leave the circle. Leave Milbury. Yes. Leave. Leave the stones. You never will. What do you mean? Nobody leaves the circle. Nonsense. You leave, you come and go as you please. Where do I go? The avenue, the sanctuary, the barrow. Never get away from the stones. Never get beyond their sight, boy. Never out of their grasp. Nobody ever leaves the circle. Not until the day of release. circle seems to have a rock base and the interesting thing is there's a there's a definite declivity towards the center it's as if there were a giant dish under the ground with the stones marking the perimeter another rock in the area hmm? chalk chalk gravel shale is it a natural outcrop i don't know it's interesting though, isn't it and no previous report of the fact no one spotted the dish before the geological surveys don't go back all that far. Well, I should imagine by the time they started digging round here, the authorities had the circle well and truly protected from the Spade and Wellies Brigade, but it's only with our sonics that we can get that deep, at least within the circle. What about alignment? Done anything on that? Now, there's another interesting thing. Most stone circles are aligned either to the sun or the moon, right? Summer solstice, winter solstice, or both. I mean, for instance, Stonehenge is aligned for both solar and lunar predictions, but this one isn't. What about other major stars? Planets? Well, these are only early figures. I'd like you to check the calculations. But there's no obvious path of alignment. Puzzle, puzzle. Hmm. Exactly. No stone circle was constructed at random. I'm afraid I've come up against another dead end, too. Hmm? What's that? My own invention. I got the telescope from that old nut to die. Ingenious. I thought the stones were leaning, remember? Uh, you made this yourself, did you? It's crude, but serviceable. I thought I was onto something, but I was wrong. The stones are actually upright. Dead upright. 90 degrees. All of them? Counted 23 of them, gave up after that. Perimeter stones? Yes. All pointing in one precise direction, but upwards. That may be it. You may be onto something, Matt. I don't believe it. I mean, no other circle has a consistent 90 degree alignment. Mm. If the dish was designed as a receiver for those psychic forces of yours, then it follows that the signals must come from a source directly above it. Almost like radio waves. Hmm. Oh, and they designed all this in Neolithic times. Oh, the mind boggles. It does indeed. To think that the circle could be constructed with that degree of sophistication. 4,000 years ago. Uh, what we have here is a, is a primitive jodrell bank, immovably aligned with 
something up there. And the question is why? <laughs> Let's worry about that later. Let's see what the observatory can tell us first. There is nothing charted on that alignment path. Nothing? Nothing. Even I won't believe that all this was designed by some Neolithic archpriest to do nothing. Well, it is conceivable there's some obscure power source up there. That may be best left alone. Where would science be if we didn't ask questions? Now, I've asked a friend of mine in Mount Palomar to help. How? By charting the alignment path accurately. Would that take long? Well, not if it's catalogued. But Matt's cabling the coordinates to them now. You can't send this, dear. Why not? It's to America, the USA. Mount Palomar Observatory. Why can't I send it? You just can't, that's all. That'd be far too expensive. Here. Have an ice cream with the change. Vanilla. Well, I don't know. Young people. Managed to get that telegram sent off. Hmm. Yeah. What's that? The alignment path. It seems to be within the constellation of the Great Bear. But there's nothing there. I told you. Could it be a void? Oh, who knows? That reminds me. You get any supper? I had a sandwich. What sandwich? Ham and banana. With gherkins and honey. Oh, yuck. You let me eat school dinners. Ah. Heavy parent bit coming out. How are you getting on at school? All right. Apparently Miss Clegg is a maths expert. Should we run up your street? Yes. Well, it's not too difficult for you, is it? I could do the stuff I was given. So what's wrong? Oh, nothing. Well, I mean, if it's all too easy for you, Oh, then... it's not that. Well, what then? Well, there seems to be two lots of children. Some are ordinary, the others are... Extraordinary? Yes. Well, in what way? Well, they're brilliant. I mean, really brilliant. Some of them are younger than me, yet they're doing problems I couldn't begin to understand. Really? And there's something else. The brilliant ones are so quiet. <laughs> Compared to you, you mean? No, I mean, they don't seem like schoolboys at all. But just because they're well-behaved? Because they're not natural. Well, I've heard some complaints in my time. But grumbling because your mates are too quiet, that's a new one. I wish I had your problem. You'd be bored out of your mind. <laughs> I'd like to try it. Um... You all right for a drink or two? Hello, hello, hello. I'm taking Margaret to the pub for an hour. So the anorak did the trick then? Don't wait up. Dad? Yeah? Do you reckon there's anything in this ley line business? I mean, this business of an international grid system, cables conducting psychic energy, it's all very unscientific. Interesting, though. What is? I've been reading up about them. Milbury claims to have more ley lines than anywhere else. 53. So if there is a system, this village could be the centre of it. So? So where's the centre of the centre? I'm sorry, Matt, you've lost me. Come and look at this. Uh, I copied these from the map in the museum. Yeah, but... but I replotted the ley lines. Ah. Now, ley lines are supposed to touch a circle at a tangent. Mm -hmm. That is, not go inside it. But these lead directly up to the stone and then stop. As if they were... Cables. Well, yes. Go on. So if they are tangents, the circle they touch has to be smaller than the stone circle. You mean a circle within the circle? Right. All right, let's see where that takes us. A house. Highfield House. It belongs to Hendrick. Highfield House belongs to your landlord. Really? I wonder if he knows. About the ley lines? Hmm. Oh, I should think so. He's pretty well informed about the local phenomena. Well, was that why the house was built just there? Well, it's Elizabethan, but it was built on the site of earlier houses. It's a bright boy, your Matthew. Well, I can't think where he gets it from. <clears throat> Come on. <laughs> oh, we can't. That's why I called for you here. The pub was closed when I got there. Closed. No one around the back. In fact, the whole village seems empty. So now you know. Now you know what I meant about being alone.
about a month ago. One night, everyone just disappeared. <laughs> My guess is they turned into werewolves. <laughs> At least that would be an explanation. The only people about last time were Dr. Lyle and a farmer called Browning. Uh, they've both got sons at school with Matthew, by the way. We were at the farm, just having dinner together, you know, getting to know one another. Well, what did they make of it? <sighs> they had no idea. I mean, they were just... Uh... They were what? Margaret? They were just... They were recent arrivals, too. Now, what happened? Have you got any idea of what happened? Matt, it's important. Do you remember how you came to be outside? Dad. Matt, this is Dr. Lyle. He helped me carry you in. Now, it's very important that you tell him what happened. Watch this, will you, Matt? Follow it all the way. That's it. Now, all the way back again. Good. I don't think there's anything permanently wrong with you, young man. But I'll look back in the morning just to be sure. Thank you, Doctor. Dad, what, what? happened? Oh, that's what I want to know, old boy. And what were you doing down here? You were supposed to have been in bed. It was Di. But go on. He... I came down and I heard this... Ch chanting sound. Yes, but go on, Matt. Then... I don't know. I was flung against a stone, and as I touched it, I felt this terrible pain. Like an electric shock? Yes. Hmm. What then? I don't remember. I really don't. It's important to get a good night's sleep. See that he takes these. Right. Matthew, your father found you on the doorstep. Did you fall, can you remember? Uh, that's a nasty bump you got on your head there. You really ought to try and find out how you came by it. I'm afraid I can't help. Ah, oh, well, relax. But if you'll take my advice, Matthew, you won't go rushing around in the middle of the night again. 
Next time it might be something worse than concussion. Thank you for your help, Doctor. Oh, I'm only too glad of the exercise. These villagers, they're all so damned healthy. I never get a call. I came here for semi-retirement after a heart attack, but I didn't expect to be totally ignored. <laughs> well, we'll keep you busy for a couple of days. <laughs> Goodbye. Thank you, Mrs. Crabtree. That smells delicious. Yes? The boy. Who is he? He's going to be all right. Good. Hey! Wait a minute! Oh, morning, Matt. How do you feel? It was Di. Some man wanted to know how yes, you were. Yes, it was Di. Well, who's Di? Said he was a friend. Sit. Now, do you want to eat? Please. Was he the man that tied the handkerchief around your head? Could have been, Dad. I told you. The last thing I remember was those people standing in a circle. Hmm. Mrs. Crabtree? Yes, sir? One invalid breakfast, please. Poor dear. How do you feel? Matt, Mrs. Crabtree asked you how you felt. All right. Bit of the head. I'm not surprised. It's odd stuff, Stone. Which stone? The doorstep. That's where you fell, wasn't it? Was it? Well, what would you like, then? Some nice scrambled egg? Yes, anything. That wasn't very polite. She was there, Dad, part of the circle. Are you sure? You sure didn't dream it? You found me on the doorstep. Did you dream that? You could have been sleepwalking. You don't understand. It happened, just as I said. And the painting coming to life, did that happen too? Yes. Right. And don't get upset. I mean, what you saw is probably some traditional local ceremony. I mean, lots of villages around here have ancient rites and rituals that they perpetuate, even though their origins are totally lost. You don't understand, Dad. It wasn't just a Morris dance or a village sing-song. The people in the circle were... I don't know... possessed. Hi. Hi. I want to ask you something. Happy day. Not here. What's that all about? New people having to stick together. What do you mean? You said that when we first met. Oh, we do. Okay, why? For protection. Protection? Protection against what? Oh, I don't know, really. You told Kevin I must be human because I'd only just arrived. That's right. So after people have been here for a while, they aren't human anymore, like those children in there? Yes, something seems to happen to them. I don't know what it is, but something seems to happen. They change. Oh, you must have noticed. Some of us are normal and the rest are happy ones. Yes. But they don't seem happy. Oh, I know. They always behave well. Never lose their tempers. Always shine in class. But they're like... Zombies. Yes. Robots. Puppets. Come on, we better go. There's a man called Di. Do you know him? The poacher. He's potty, I think. Always trying to warn me. Telling me to be careful. He told me if I ever needed sanctuary, I could go to him for help. No. If we ever need help, we should go to the sanctuary. The sanctuary, of course. <laughs> Lynette Barrow. Di lives there. How far is it? At the end of the avenue. Outside the circle? Well, it's outside the village, I suppose. But it's still... Well, it's still within the stones, though it's not really inside the circle. It's like some terrible nightmare. It's having a traumatic effect on Matt. Could it be Milbury, as it was? Well, why not? I mean, there's certainly an uncanny resemblance. The stones, the hill. Yes. There are less stones in the picture, of course. The incomplete circle. But there's the avenue leading to the sanctuary. The head of the solar serpent. Well, certainly could be Milbury. So if the subject is real, it's likely the story it tells has some real significance. It's a reasonable assumption. The question is what? 
A brilliant source of light that appears to have the power to turn people to stone. And a man and a boy escaping towards the sanctuary. Some pagan superstition, perhaps. Beginning as a ritual and ending as... It's terrifying. <laughs> We're lucky we live in this century. Oh, I don't know. There's a lot we don't understand. Uh, Matthew said he saw a ring of people holding hands. That echoes the painting again. I suppose he could have dreamt it, but he seemed very sure. A ring of people holding hands. Mm. I didn't know they did that here. Did what? Well, it's known as clipping the church. The parishioners clasp hands and walk round it in a clockwise direction with the sun and then advance and retreat three times. It's an old custom, something to do with renewing one's faith by binding minds and souls together. But it doesn't make sense here. Why not here? Well, the church is deconsecrated. It's in the gift of the manor and hasn't had an incumbent for years. Yes, but according to Matthew, those people were nowhere near the church. to Milbury and to the school and it may be some time before you're able to move to the high table with the others. In the meantime I thought a little extra work would do you no harm although I'm as sorry as you are that it will cut into the weekend. That's why I was dropped from the football it's her fault. This for instance is the standard you will eventually attain. <laughs> this is the weekend prep for the rest of the class. No good asking if any of you could attempt to prove it. Please miss. Yes Jimmy. That be a special case of a Hilbert transform, miss. Splendid. Now, would you like to show us your proof? going to have to make room for Jimmy at the table, aren't we? It seems you finally made the breakthrough at last. Extraordinary good or extraordinary bad? Hang on a minute. Kevin. Stone acting as a magnet? Well, it's not possible. How much do you know about magnetic fields? Well, teach me, Professor. I know the Earth has one. So do rocks. Normally, the Earth's magnetic field is in alignment with that of the rocks. At the time the stratum was formed. And these aren't? No, these are in alignment with the Earth's present magnetic field. Which means? Which means there's only one possible solution. Some tremendous energy has passed through these stones. Very recently. I don't get it. Yesterday a dum-dum, today's doing tricks on the blackboard. Mm. What happened in between? Same that happened to the rest of them. <laughs> What's that? Whatever it is, I don't want it happen to me. What about Bright Boy here? If he gets a treatment, he'll make Einstein look like a no-no, <laughs> won't you? <laughs> treatment? Is that what you think Jimmo got? Some kind of treatment? Don't ask. If it is a treatment, who gives it and why? We'll just have to wait and see. What do you mean? It's obvious. There's only us three left. It's just a question of who's next. Mm. Then we must stick together, compare notes whenever we can. Then no one can take us by surprise. Right. <gasps> Die! 
had to be done. What? The shock treatment. They had to get you away from there. Danger, you see. Dangerous it was. So it was you? You are saviour, I am. Save me from what? The past. Aye. The past, that's what it was. My past. And your future. I don't understand. I let you into the secret, boy, and neither do I. Di, you do understand. You understand something which is more than we do. I've got feelings. That's quite different from understanding. What do you feel? What do I feel? I feel... haunted. <laughs> no, not ghosts and that. Something happened here in the past, and... It's happening again today. Boogie, boogie. Any idea what? Everyone turned to stone. Go on. Go on, boy. Explain yourself. I have a picture, a very old painting. It's of Milbury. It shows people turning to stone. You mean all those stones out there might be people? Petrified. It's more complicated than that. Let go. Take go. Maze it is. And at the center, treasure. Treasure? Trouble is, there's danger too. What kind of danger? If I knew that, we could avoid it, couldn't we? But we can't. You say there's treasure here. What treasure? The most priceless treasure of all. Mm -hmm. Knowledge. Knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> what do you make of that? What is it? Where did you get it? It's mine. I found it. It came to me. Your father would be interested in that. Dad? It's more on your mum's line, isn't it? Yes. Shall I show it to her? To my mother? It's mine. I found it. It came to me. Di, we won't take it. We'll make a tracing. Yes. That's what we'll do. We'll copy it. Yes, like a brass rubbing. I'll get the stuff. It's a key. Yes. What it is. My key. The original's made of clay, you say? Mm. Either that or some kind of stone. It looked very old. Yes. A snake? A serpent? A cobra? What's the difference? They'll give me the shudders. A serpent's bigger and more powerful. It's also a symbol. A symbol of what? Well, it was originally the guardian of knowledge, but later serpents were supposed to protect sacred hills and mazes. Di knew that. He said something about the village being like a maze, with treasure at the centre. And the treasure was knowledge. Di? Well, how did he know? He didn't know, Mum. He just felt it. And the danger in the maze may have been this yucky snake thing. Oh, yes, of course. Di's feelings are remarkably accurate. This symbol has a special significance here. The church. There's a carving of a serpent on the font. <laughs> it's biting the foot of a bishop. And I told you what that meant, remember? Mm. It represents the battle between pagan and Christian. Yes, that's right. You see, after the battle was over, the Christians built their churches on the sites of pagan temples. I mean, ground that was already sacred. But they couldn't be absolutely sure that the ancient religion had been completely stamped out. So the carving on the font was probably intended as a warning. A warning? Yes, to be constantly on their guard. Against the power of the serpent. That's right. Then this thing of dies, whatever it is, is pagan. Oh, there's no doubt about that. Some sort of amulet to keep the owner from harm, perhaps. I'd love to see the original. Could you get it for me? Adam! Oh, Mr. Hendrick. I've been looking for you. Me? Why? What have I done? First things first. What will you have? No, no, let me, please. Uh, two large whiskies. Two yes. I was told there was a telegram for you. Oh. I promised to deliver it. Oh, thank you. Uh, will you excuse oh. me? Not bad news, I hope. No, no, it's from California. Mount Palomar Observatory. They're doing some research for me. It's in reply to a telegram of my own. Research about Milbury? Yes. Well, I wondered what the stones of the circle were all pointing at up there. And as far as I could work out, they formed no alignment with the sun or the moon or any of the other major planets or stars. It just didn't seem to make sense. 
but now it does. In a way, yes. According to this, it's aligned to a supernova which exploded centuries before Christ, about the start of our existence. There's nothing there now but a black hole. That's a huge mass of imploding energy. I could have told you that. Oh, let's go and sit down. What do you know about the supernova? <laughs> it's unfair. I should have introduced myself properly when we first met. Of course. Hendrik supernova. You discovered the black hole. Raphael Hendrik, the astronomer. The ex-astronomer. I designed my chair in Cambridge five years ago. Yes, I always wondered why. Because of some papers, I suppose. May I ask what papers? They were given to me by a colleague, written in dog Latin, in a style earlier than Bede's, about sixth century. A mishmash of fact and fiction about megalithic Britain, <laughs> legends and stories handed down through the centuries, which the author had picked up. No one had ever paid much account of them. I like so much of that stuff in the Ashmolean. <laughs> None of the stories were authenticated, but um, there was one event which, because of my discovery of the black hole, made me sit up and take notice. What was that? Someone in the village, Wheel Wicker, as it was then called, was reported by bardic tradition as having seen a star explode. So that's why you settled in Milbury, because somebody had actually witnessed the beginning of the black hole. It was like coming home. Even though there's nothing there? The black hole's there. Gravitational force is so powerful they're beyond our comprehension. <laughs> no, I, I meant nothing we can see. Well, that's what's so intriguing, don't you think? To know it's there and yet not be able to see it. <laughs> I'm afraid at the moment my interests are more earthbound. You know which constellation it's in? Yes, sir, Major. The great bear. And you know for early man the bear was a, an object of veneration. The bear cult is probably as old as any other religion. Well, are you suggesting it was started by the primitive cave dweller who saw your supernova explode? Primitive cave dweller. I think you do him an injustice. According to legend, he was a visionary, a spiritual leader, a man of destiny. <laughs> I beg his pardon. I think you might be well advised to do so. Serious, is it? You see that man there? The one with the white hair? Yes. That's Tom Browning. The farmer invited Dr. Lyle and me for supper the night we were all newcomers, remember? I remember. I know Mr. Browning. He's Jimmo's father. But it's the first time he's taken part in one of these occasions. It's so unlike him. He was so contemptuous of them. He said they were an anachronism, a complete waste of time. <laughs> he's obviously changed his mind. He's having the time of his life. And then there were six. Oh, let's keep things in perspective. It's not as if we were being killed off one by one. Isn't it? Of course it isn't. What are we so frightened of? What is this disease we're so afraid of catching? Happy day it is. So we say happy day to each other instead of good morning. What's so terrible about that? You're talking about the symptom, Doctor. The disease goes much deeper. It's an epidemic. It doesn't appear to be an antidote. An antidote? To being happy. Well, if we don't find one soon, it'll be too late. Aren't you being a bit melodramatic? I mean, if it's as bad as that, why not just pack up and leave? I need this job. Sandra's at school here. And you, Brick? I've got an awful lot of work to get through. I can't just up sticks now. So you are, in effect, trapped. Come in. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Crabtree. I've made another chocolate cake, Master Matthew. She gives me the creeps. Mm, me too. Me, she gives chocolate cake. Now, what have we got to go on? After living in the village for a short while, people change. How and why? Well, there's one thing, Dad. Families seem to change together. I mean, Jimmo and his father, whatever happened, happened to them at the same time. Yes. It's almost as if... Go on. No, it's impossible. As if it were all planned. 
Yes. Plan. No proof. Just emotional reaction to unspecified data. Plan by whom? Or by what? Ah, oh, now that is a can of beans. Yes, and until it's fully open, I suggest we stay close together. We go around with our eyes open and pool our information. Happy day people are hardly likely to tell us why they behave as they do. If indeed they know. Well, it seems to me there are two possible sources. Two other people not affected by this phenomenon. There's Hendrick and that poacher friend of yours, Matt. Di? Yes. I know why Di's immune. Why? He lives at the sanctuary. He says that he's safe there. And Hendrick's house is at the centre of the ley lines grid. Well, perhaps they give him the same sort of protection. Highfield house? Yeah. Hendrick asks us to dinner tonight. Summoned to the presence, sir. That's useful. You can do some detective work for us. No, that's the pity. I had to turn him down. Oh? Yes, I, I don't spread it around, but I've got to go back and see an old patient of mine. Doesn't trust her new doctor. Wants me to go back and give her a checkup. It's over 30 miles away. Well, that is a pity. I am only too glad to go. It's the fact that someone actually needs me. This village is far too healthy for my liking. I told you, apart from Matthew's head here, I've had nothing to exercise me for the past month. That healed up in no time. Fifty-five patients. And I'm probably more sick than any one of them. Oh, do me good to get out of the village. <laughs> Haven't stirred since we got here. Kevin. Coming. Thanks for the cake. Bye, Kevin. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Doctor. Come back. This way. It's Hendrick. I thought you said the church was deconsecrated. Yes, it is. But as Lord of the Manor, he's responsible for its upkeep. Let's have a word with him. Well, I hope you were impressed. With what? Wicker stain, our little celebration. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, all Morris dances look the same. I know what you mean. <laughs> Nevertheless, our villagers really enjoy them. <laughs> to tell you a secret, Wicker stain was only an excuse. They dance whenever they feel like it. On any day of the year, there's always some old festival they can use as a precedent. Well, I'm afraid Morris dancing leaves me cold, too. I'm sure you'll come to appreciate it. Everyone does. Like Tom Browning and his son? Exactly. When he came here first, old Tom was interested in nothing but sowing and reaping. Look at him today. As enthusiastic as anybody. What made him change his mind? Probably realized what he was missing. In a small village like this, there's no point in standing aloof. For complete fulfilment, one should uh, play one's part of the community. I didn't notice you with bells on your toes. No, well, I have a certain position to maintain. <laughs> Sounds pompous, I know, but um, the villagers prefer me to be a non-participant. If I joined in, they'd feel confused. Why? Because they need someone to look up to. Figurehead. So it's not just the position of your house that makes you a man apart. You mean that it's supposed to be on sacred ground? I mean the fact that it's surrounded by ley lines. Sorry, I don't quite follow. Well, perhaps the original site was chosen because the ley lines form a sort of protective barrier. Against what? The same thing the Ring of Villages is supposed to protect it from. Evil. Interesting theory. Well, you must come to dinner soon and put it to the test. See if you feel any vibrations. I should like that. I'll see you both tomorrow. No, I doubt it. I shall be up to my eyes the next few days. I'm way behind schedule. What does that matter? Relax and enjoy yourself, Adam. You don't know how lucky you are. Lucky? That you answered Milbury's call. He's wrong. Why? I do know how lucky I am. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yes, he forgot them, left them behind. Well, can you drop them back at the way to school in the morning? Dad? Mm hmm They feel... funny. In what way? Full of static. What, are they plastic or leather? Leather. I know. First principles, leather's a non-conductor. But... it's there. Let me see. Nothing. I think that bang in the head's beginning to get through to you. It wasn't only what I could feel. Um... Hey, Matt, what's the matter? It's getting stronger. And I can see. I can see. See what? Dr. Lyle. What's he doing? He's coming out of his surgery. He's... He's getting into his car. With Kevin? Alone. Go on. He's driving off. It's the first time he's had a chance to leave the village since he arrived. He, he's pleased. Pleased? Well, how do you know? I'm inside his head. I can read his mind. He's driving towards the avenue, towards the edge of the circle. What's that? What is it? It's puzzled. Very puzzled. Is something wrong with the engine? The uh, car, perhaps? Something in front of him. Something blocking the way. Describe it. I can't. The picture's fading. It's going blank. It's gone. It's gone. Hey, Matt. Now, Matt, was all that for real? Did you really see that happening? You saw it? I saw it. Psychometry. What? The ability to tune into the vibrations of inanimate objects, to receive feelings, ideas, and images from them. There's nothing new about it. No, but it's new to Matt, though. But he's never demonstrated his talent before. He discovered it here in the village. Perhaps that shock he got when he touched the stone affected him more than we realized. Made him start hallucinating. You think that's what his visions were? Hallucinations? I don't know. It's possible it was caused by the residual magnetism in the rock. Now, the rock I can understand, but magnetism in a glove? Oh. Nothing at all. That does take some explaining. You've checked with Dr. Lyle. I called on the way here, but there was no one in. Suppose it did all happen, just as Matt described.
belonging to die. The children made a tracing of it. Have you seen the original? No, but after they left, I realised I'd seen one exactly like it. Remember the poor old barber surgeon, crushed to death by the falling sarsen? Well, these fragments were found by his body. Mummy! Oh, it's thick. Careful, careful. Oh, think you'll be there? He nearly went down. Barricaded up. Oh, yeah. Die. 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 With you? Is it you with you? Yes, die. It's me. Bring him for. My mother asks us to find you. She wants to see that clay thing on the serpent island. But you can't. It's mine. I found it. It came to me. What did you do? Don't be silly, Di. He's one of us. Who are you, boy? I don't know what you mean. You would have known yesterday. What's so different about yesterday? Tell him! Give us the amulet, Di. Give it to me. Like that, wouldn't you? Like me to go unprotected? Never! It came to me! It's mine! It's done! Fifty-three stones remaining, and fifty-three ley lines passing through the village. Invisible power cables. Don't tell me you're becoming to believe in it all. <laughs> I try to keep an open mind. I thought you scientists needed proof. As a rule, yes. I've learned something since coming to Milbury. What's that? There are more things in heaven and earth than are philosophised about in my dreams. Yes, I've learned that too. Fifty-three. Is there any significance in the number? I don't know of any. Like five and three are supposed to be sacred numbers, but then, of course, so was seven. Mm -hmm. Fifty-three. Something? Coincidence? But before you and Matthew came, the village had fifty-three inhabitants. Now there are fifty-five. We appear to have thrown a spanner. Dr. Lyle. Just returning these. Oh, thank you. I was trying to get hold of you. Oh, not professionally, I hope. <laughs> no, 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 no. Just to ask a few questions. You sound like a detective. <laughs> Hardly. <laughs> Coffee? Oh, thanks. How kind. What happened to you last night? You know what happened to me last night. Do I? Did you go and see your patient 30-odd miles away? Yes. And nothing happened on the way? Nothing. Uh, nothing went wrong with your car? Any reason why it should. <laughs> no, it's just that Matthew had this absurd idea. He thought that he could feel what was happening to feel? you. Feel? Yes. How? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, through these, you left them behind. Oh, thank you. I'm sorry, I don't understand. Psychometry. Oh, I see. Thank you. Yes, I have heard of that. So Matt's a budding psychometrist, is he? <laughs> Are you sure you stopped at the edge of the circle? Why? It's something barring your way. Uh, something in the road, you mean? Yes, yes. Well, I'm sorry to disappoint you. 
<laughs> well, I'm rather relieved, really. I'm not sure that I could cope with the psychometric son. A bit awkward having him know what you were up to every minute of the night and day. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't be of any help. Happy day to you. What did he say? School. Where's my father, Mrs. Crabtree? I believe he's at the museum, Master Matthew. He is. I've just come from there. Did he tell you about the... About your experiment in telepathy? He did indeed. What was it you saw at the edge of the circle? I saw an open road. You, you didn't stop at all? <laughs> I'm afraid not. The picture was so clear. Perhaps I'd better have another look at that cracked head of yours. No. No, thanks. Come on, Sandra. Hey, wait for me. No. It's time you got to school. I'm sure Miss Kegg will be happy to see you. She will. Do you think he's been got at? Oh, I knew it. Good enough for me. But how? What was the doctor doing at the cottage? Oh, just talking to Mrs. Crabtree. Right, that's one thing he wouldn't have done yesterday. Where are you going? What's this? The font in the church. You remember Mum said it had a carving of a serpent on it? It's exactly the same as the one on the rock. Exactly. Come on, let's go to the church. No, we can't. It's locked. It's been locked for years. But why? Because there's no vicar, no priest. There hasn't been one for ages. That's odd. Mum says it's up to Mr. Hendrick. It's one of those old churches where the priest is appointed by the Lord of the Manor. And he hasn't even bothered? No. Five pence. I'm sorry, Matthew. That's not for sale. Oh, but it was on the rack. My mistake. It, it's not for sale. Oh, why not? Happy day, children. But there is no stone there. If it was a sarsen, it would show up in this photograph. Well, it's there, all right. Is it a recent photograph? Wait a moment. Would X mark the spot? Mm. Yes. It's impossible. Why? It's the place where the barber surgeon was found, crashed to death by a sarsen. That must be the stone we saw then. No. But why not? Because it was removed years ago and re-erected inside the circle. There is nothing there now. But we saw it. Well, all right, show me. Right. <laughs> Yes. Sir. Sir. Oh, come on, man, it's urgent. Where's your phone? If you'll just wait here, sir. Adam! What a pleasant surprise. No, not pleasant. As some man, Welsh poacher, is dead. Dead? 
Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. I've just seen his body down by the earthworks. Oh. An accident? It's a heart attack, I think. I couldn't see any sign of injury. Oh, come on! Poor old die. Still, there's no escaping one's destiny, is there? Destiny? Yes. Look, we'll have to call the police. Where's the nearest station? Police, oh, my dear fellow. I don't think we need to involve them. Not if he's died from natural causes. We'll get hold of Dr. Lyle. We haven't even got an outside line. Look, the police will have to be told. I'll tell you what. Let's go and take a look. Just to make sure we haven't made any mistake. There can be no mistake. He's dead. Come along. As the local JP, I suppose I represent the majesty of the law in Milbury. Now, let me get this straight. You saw Di fall off the earthwork, and when you got there, he disappeared. Yes. There was just this rock with a serpent on it. Or like the one on the amulet. Yes, exactly. The same as on that clay disc thing, and the same as on the font in the church. And it's exactly the same one as that. Perhaps this isn't the place. No, no, this is the place, all right. Oh, come, we're a civilized community. We're not body snatchers. He was here. And those stones weren't. So what are you suggesting? That somebody removed his body and put these stones in his place? I'm not suggesting anything. I just don't understand. Well, anyway, old man, he's obviously not dead. Here it is. What? That rock we saw before we found Di's body. It's here in the picture. Look, I've already told you. It's not marked on the chart. Look. It's here. But look. The stone we saw on the way back. The sarsen with the serpent carved on it. It isn't in the picture. But it is marked on the chart. So, we have a stone in the chart that isn't on the picture, and one in the picture that isn't on the chart. Well, could it be that they're the same one, in a different place? Matt, hmm? how many figures in the picture, how many people? I've no idea. Count them. Untoward, I trust, sir. The gentlemen seem quite agitated. Well, you know what these scientists are. Always looking for rational explanations. Yeah. Everything's as it should be. As always. Indeed, sir. Link, I shall be having another dinner party tonight. Uh, sir? The sooner we're all one big happy family, the better. There are four to choose from, sir. Four who haven't yet enjoyed your hospitality. Yes. You'll invite them all together? No, no. They must come in order of precedence. So it's the ladies first. Precisely. 52, 53, 54, 55. 55 people in the picture. I thought there might be. Why? Well, now that you and your father have arrived, there are 55 people in the village. Oh, the artist can't have known that. Not all those years ago. No, but... It's it's almost as if... as if what, Mum? As if the painting were some sort of prophecy. It's gone. What? The dye's body. It's gone. Disappeared. So he isn't dead. No, he's dead, all right. And I'm no doctor, but when we saw him, he was dead. But his body's just disappeared. You can't, but Dad. Look. Those pieces were found by Dye's body. Yeah. May I? Well, what do you need? The fragments. The amulet found by the barber surgeon's body. Ah. Uh, just be careful with them, will you? It fits. Uh. 
Try the other ones, Matt. Mm -hmm. Ah! That too. Yes. Static. Energy, it's there. The energy? What soul? Shh, shh, shh. Visitor. Beginning. End. Visitor. Bright. Sh shining. Circle. People. Village. Priest. Stones. Power. Beam. Always. Get some water. That's what happened to touch Dr. Lyon's glove. I don't worry, he'll be all right in a minute. Come on, Matt. Have a drink. Come on, drink. A girl, man? Understand. Visitor. Somebody visiting. Village? Or oh, the priest. A visiting priest, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Stones, power, beam, always. There's always power in the stones. That makes sense. Well, could this be the beam? And the bright, shining circle. Yeah. No. It's not the circle that's bright and shiny. It's something else. The priest? But the visitor, perhaps. A bright, shining visitor. A visitor. Bright and shiny. Oh, no. Wait a minute. Visitor. Guest. Guest? A guest star. That's what it used to be called in the olden days. What? A supernova. Hendrix supernova. I'll have one at the pub. Run these through the computer, will you? Usual program. I hope I've got those correlations right. Have they been wrong yet? I can't afford to be wrong. Um, when did we transmit last night? 20, 33, 42.75 seconds, sir. Hmm. Well, if those figures make sense tonight, we start at, um... I'll call you to dinner in good time, sir. Hmm. I'll run these right away. Beginning, end, circle, always, never-ending circle. It means nothing to me. Nothing, as far as I can make out. That's the beginning and the end. Well, it sounded genuine enough. Matt certainly seems to have the gift. Mm, that's what worries me. But why? Well, I believe he really did see Lyle through those gloves. I think he saw him get into his car, drive off and stop at the edge of the circle. Proof next day Lyle is happy daying us all. The question is, what happened in between? He says he went to visit his patient 30 miles away. Oh, and came back a different man. And don't forget his son Kevin has changed too. So whatever it was happened here, inside the circle. Mm, I'm sure of it. You may be right. I'm afraid. <laughs>
Was he in there? No. Where could he be? Who knows? Where else would he go? I don't know. Too late to buy your drink? Uh, thank you, but no. There is one thing, though. The clay disc in the museum, do you know it? The barber's surgeon's amulet. Yes, what connection is there between that and your supernova? None that I know of. Why should they be connected? Matthew thinks they are. Oh, does he now? Very perceptive, that son of yours. Perceptive and formidable. Formidable? He's never going back there. I know it. He's never going back to the sanctuary. Then where is he? Gone. Dead, you mean? Not exactly. He's just not here anymore. Not here? Just something I felt from the disc. In what way? It's no good. I can't explain. How about some lunch, Master Matthew? Thanks. I'll make myself a sandwich. Fancy one of my specials, Sandra? Like what? Ham, mint jelly, mayonnaise, oh. apple crumble. You're not going to spoil her appetite now. <laughs> She's going out to dinner tonight. How does she know? I mean, how did she know? Hendrik hadn't even invited us then. Please, don't go. Well, tell him you've changed your mind. Why? I'm longing to see the house. Look, Dr. Lyle said he was invited to dinner by Hendrick and he had to change his mind because he had an appointment with an old patient 30 miles away. Now, I don't believe he ever kept that appointment. And if he didn't, then where else did he go? Well, he can't have gone to Hendrick's. Not if he wasn't expected. Wasn't he? What do you mean? If what happened to Dr. Lyle happened in the village, well, then it must have happened at Hendricks. It could have happened anywhere. Hendricks in charge. People look up to him. And I am sure he knows exactly what's going on. Well, I'll be able to ask him, won't I? Oh, come on, Sandra, we must go. Look, promise me one thing. Anything, of course. Come back here afterwards. For a nightcap. I'd love to. See you later. Bye-bye. What's that? What? Come on. That? Sandra's scarf. Did she leave it behind? I borrowed it. Doesn't suit you? To use as a camera. Ah. A clever old you. Clever young me. Old man. They're late. That's the one thing I didn't allow for. And you time in hand, then. Eh? Women. Delightful creatures, but punctuality is not among their virtues. Yes, sir. There is much to be said for a celibate life. And yet I have my children. The best of both worlds. <laughs> and here are the new arrivals. I'll receive them. You make sure everything's on schedule. I mean, it's a man. Don't you know the difference? <laughs> lovely house. I would like to have asked you before, but uh, there were others who had to come first. You know what a small village is. One has to observe the protocol. It's a digital clock. Electronic. But what do you need it for? You've got dear old grandfather here. He doesn't keep such a good time. Much more attractive, though. Well, forgive me, but this one seems so... Out of place, mm. I know. It's just that I need absolute accuracy. Mm. Why? For my work. I still dabble, you know. Oh, really? I like to make sure that everything's still where it should be at any given time. Everything? The stars and planets. And supernovas? Especially supernovas. Dad, I felt something then. Sort of tremor. What was it? Fear? I don't know. It's gone now. False alarm? Could be. 
It was like I felt when Bob wasn't run over by that lorry that never appeared. How about something to eat? Great. A nice lolly sandwich? Make it a sherbet butty. Oof. Everyone says that. But it's not so extraordinary when you consider where we are. Look at this table. Not many have the fortune to live within a stone circle. I wanted this room to reflect the uniqueness of this environment of ours. It's fascinating. Sandra, will you sit here? Your mother opposite you? And I shall sit between you. Possibly. <laughs> I found it in the mason's yard. Magnificent, isn't it? And these other pieces, the, the table and the chairs, you had them made? The mason carved them in the same style from the same stone. Does he do restoration work? I'm always being asked at the museum. Afraid not. He went out of business ages ago. Bon appétit. My children? Egg and chips suit you, Mr. Psychometrist? Fantastic. All quiet in the A-line front? Where's the tomato ketchup? Oh, I'm sorry, sir. It's on its way, sir. Dad. What? Something's beginning to happen. Can you see where they are? They are high. At the top of the house. A dining room at the top of a house? There's a clock. A digital clock. It's important. It means something. Who's there? Mr. Hendrick. Sandra and her mother. And... And... A butler. What are they doing? Eating. Just eating. But Sandra's getting nervous. Just merely. Rather unusual, don't you think? A hymn of celebration. Celebration? What are they celebrating? Deliverance from the past, their entry into the future now. Deliverance? Entry into the future? <laughs> Clumsy shape for a table, isn't it? I was thinking that. Or so it would be if that were its only function. Did you know that there is another great dish of stone beneath the ground here? Adam Brake told me that. Did he? And of course he told us that uh, my house stands in the center of a circle. No, Matthew worked that out. He's very clever at working things out. So I've noticed. But I still don't understand the connection between the circle and the table. Perhaps it is not necessary for you to understand. It is only necessary that you should believe me when I tell you that all works towards good. Happiness and peace are the reward of the believer. You make it sound as if the circle were a temple and the table an altar. Your temple. Your altar. Margaret, my dear.
anger of fire, fire of speech, breath of knowledge, render us free from harm. Return to us the innocence that once we knew. Complete the circle. Make us at one with nature and the elements. It is time. they drop in on their way home for a nightcap. They'll come. Pity I didn't use something of Margaret's for my psychometric bit. Might have learnt more through her than through Sandra. Learned or imagined. I was right about the supernova, wasn't I? The broken amulets gave me that. And I was right about the doctor, the night he left his gloves behind, and the next day he'd changed. You think the same thing's happened to the girls? I'm sure it has. Yes, but what? What happened after you lost contact? Such power! White! Brilliant! Impossible to move! Energy! Force! Sucking! Change! Changing! Ah, what happened? Are you okay, Matt? It's gone. There's a blank wall. I can't get through anymore. Well, try. You must keep trying. It's no good. Sandra seems to have stopped feeling. Stopped feeling? But what's happened to her? We've lost them. What's all this? A sales? You two look as though you've seen a ghost. Am I glad to see you? Are we glad to see you? Where's Sandra? In bed, I hope. So, how was dinner at the big house? Oh, I didn't go. You didn't go? I had a couple of boiled eggs instead. You didn't go to Hendrick's house? I don't know anybody who has, apart from you. I was looking forward to it in a strange kind of way. You were both invited to dinner. Why didn't you go? Sandra wasn't feeling too well. I thought an early night was called for. So I sent my apologies to Hendrik. But I couldn't pass up your kind offer, could I? Mm. Cheers. I don't understand. When you left here, you were on your way to Highfield House. Yes, but she'd been feeling queasy all day. So you really didn't go? But don't you believe me? Yes, yes, of course, of course. Which leaves me with egg on my face. I'm sorry about all that, Dad. Good night. Yes, good night, Matt. Margaret, if... I'm glad you didn't go. Really. Good night, Matthew. What was all that about? Egg on his face. Listen. Such power! White! Brilliant! Impossible to 
to move energy force sucking change changing Margaret Margaret Don't worry Adam I'm all right I'm perfectly happy Leaving? What do you mean, leaving? I never heard the line. Afraid so, Mrs. C. But you seem so set here, working so hard you were, enjoying yourself. We still need breakfast. How about two of your specials to send us on our way? You'll never believe me, Master Matthew. Tell your father he doesn't want to go. You tell him not to leave, nobody. I'd like sausages and tomatoes with my eggs and some fried bread, please. And some of that chocolate cake is any left. Mm, sounds good. Uh, twice, please, Mrs. Crabtree. Uh, you can have my cake, Matt. Thanks. Our room's packed, empty. Apart from the one thing we've forgotten. Which is? The one thing that brought us here, I'm beginning to think. Mm -hmm. The painting, Quad Non Est. Oh, yes, of course, the painting. Um, it's over the museum. We left it over there and we took it for Margaret. Like I'll trot across and get it. Mm -hmm. Tell Mr. Scratcher I'll be five minutes. I'll return this at the same time. Sandra? Oh, Matt, waiting for me? Uh, hi. Uh, this is at our place. I, I thought I'd swap it for my painting. There it is. I looked everywhere. Thanks, Matt. You can pick up the painting on the way home from school. I'm not going to school. We're I mean, I'm taking the day off to help Dad. Is your mother in? I'll get it now. No, she's out. Look, I'll be late. Uh, you said the church was locked, not used. What was Mr. Hendrick doing in there? I don't know. It's his church. I must rush. Sandra? Goodbye. Not goodbye, Matt. We'll see you soon. He went across to your place. To fetch this? I thought he'd forget it. So I brought it over. Why? Why what? Why did you think he'd forget it? Well, he hadn't been to fetch it. And I didn't want to miss you. You're leaving today, right? Who told you that? You are leaving. Oh, Adam, stop playing games. Are you leaving or aren't you? Coffee? Mm. Another cup, please, Mrs. Crabtree. Oh, Master Matthew, is it? Oh. Welcome, Mrs. Smythe. And how do you feel today? She feels very happy, Mrs. Crabtree. She's been a lot happier with a cup of coffee. Thank you. 
do you like my little secret toys? Hmm? Now, what are you doing here? Mr. Hendrick, I've got to get back. My father's waiting for me. I haven't had breakfast yet. Ah, the estimable Mrs. Crabtree. Bacon, egg and tomato, no doubt. And chocolate cake? Hmm? Don't go just yet. I think you owe me an explanation. Now, what were you looking for? Well? I was trespassing. Patently, but why? I thought this was just a church. Just a church? Just a place of worship? Oh, perhaps it is. Uh, you know what this is, of course? Yes, a computer. A computer? I like to keep in touch, plotting the course of the stars, predicting positions at any given time. Electronics, magnetism, power. What else has man ever worshipped but power? Knowledge. Knowledge and truth. Ah, so that's your excuse. The reason why man continues to pry, to extend the narrow limits of his comprehension, to reach for the stars. But one cannot grasp the ungraspable. There are certain stars that will never be reached. Come, I'll take you to your father. Mr. Hendrick. Don't let me disturb you. Just wanted to see that this rascal got back to you in time. What's he been up to? Oh, no doubt he'll tell you himself. So, you're going. Leaving us. Who told you that? I thought you had a big program of research. I had. You feel you know all you need to know about Milbury? Hmm? All I need to know. Yes, perhaps I do. Then I can't persuade you to remain. Afraid not. I'm truly sorry about that. To be honest, I, I've taken a great liking to you two. I had hoped that once you'd settled down, we could have become, well, closer. People of your ability will be needed here in the future. There's a great deal to be achieved. Not only here in the village, but soon outside the circle. Yes. That's what worries me. The extension of your work here. A world empty of feeling. You're an intelligent man, Adam. Stay and help me in my work. You'll not regret it. No, we're away. What is your work, Mr. Hendrick? Matt, stay out of this. Father to the village? Squire? No, it's more than that. You see yourself as a high priest here, don't you? Matt, let him go on. What I want to know is why. Why do you need to be surrounded by a mindless congregation? Why did I have to be brainwashed into accepting you? It's not me they're accepting. What, then? Their own happiness. There can be no happiness without free will. They have to be shown the way. But first they have to be blindfolded so they can't see where they're going. I'm leading them. They're in safe hands. Come on, Matt, it's time to go. like Dr. Lyle. This is the way Dr. Lyle came.
Dad? 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 You all right? Where are we? We're here to Sarsen. There was a stone in the middle of the road. Not a stone. No. It wasn't a stone. We, we couldn't have missed it. And travelling at that speed... It, it, it was grey. Like a stone. But it was human. But not human. It was enormous. It was her. Oh, that's ridiculous. That's what Dr. Lau saw. It was her. But huge. Unearthly. It's a delusion. Mrs. Crabtree. Could it be? Ah, my sleeping guests awake. And how are we? The good Dr. Lyle seemed to think that we showed no sign of hurt. I trust he was correct in his assessment. How did we come to be here, Hendrik? Well, fortunately, Link here, returning from a shopping expedition, came across your car at the entrance to Linnet Avenue. You were both apparently unconscious. Fumes, do you imagine? Carbon monoxide from a damaged exhaust. No, I think it was simpler than that. I think we lost our way. Is that possible in Milbury? No, not geographically. I think we missed the turning. The time turning. We failed to get through to our present. Dear me. Would you care for Link to contact Dr. Lyle? Perhaps he could uh, take another look at you. We seemed to crash into something. When I was doing 40 miles an hour, there was no way I could avoid it, and we hit an obstacle. And then I blacked out. That's exactly what happened. Take a look out of the window, Matthew. Your car, wholly undamaged. Dad, he's right. Now, how about telling Dr. Lyle about these hallucinations of yours? Keep your doctor, Mr. Hendrick. Oh, Adam. Matthew was close to the truth this morning, wasn't he? But you're not really a priest, are you? How do you see yourself? As a magus? Uh, get out. You're going too far, too fast, my dear Adam. There are aspects that even I find difficult to understand. Your own arrival, for instance. Just get us out of here. That's all we ask of you, magus. Yes, Magus indeed. Scholar magician leading his people to beauty and truth. You are wrong. Not even halfway right, Professor Brake. But how uncivil of me. You must both want to freshen up. I'll, um, I'll leave the tray. I'm sorry you missed our little celebration this afternoon. We had one of our Morris dances. But don't worry, there'll be another one tomorrow. Dinner will be in about um, 55 minutes. That's it, 55 minutes. So they've had another happy day dance. That would have been for Margaret and Sandra. Yes, and tomorrow's will be for us. Dad, there's no way out of the circle. Di told me there's no way out until the stones release us. Mumbo jumbo. We're in a now that's parallel to our own, a, a time shift that's caused by the energies received here in the circle. We must keep our sanity, use our knowledge and our understanding to reverse the situation, get back into our own time. But how? Escape from the circle by reversing the effects of this psychic power? Or disconnecting it. There must be a way. There's no escape from the circle. I don't believe it. If there's a way in, there's a way out. If there's a sanctuary. It may not be a way out, but it's supposed to be a place of safety. Mm -hmm. Gotta get there first. It's inside the stones. There's nothing to stop us. Nothing? There is. Oh, hello, darling. Finished your prep? Yes, Mum. Those equations, suddenly they're so easy. Miss Clegg's moved you to the high table. Yes, we're all there now. All except Matthew. Oh, I don't suppose you'll have long to wait. 
Happy day, Mrs. Smythe. Miss Sandra. Happy day, Mrs. Crabtree. I have a message for you. Professor Brake and his son. I'm just on my way. Don't be late now. Poor things. They must have felt so left out. All right. Now, what have we got to go on? We know that the circle here is in alignment with Hendrick's supernova. Which is now a black hole. Right. What do we know about black holes, then? Well, not much. They're collapsed stars whose huge gravitational forces allow nothing to... not even light waves to escape. And we know that anything that comes within their boundaries is sucked into the centre and crushed out of existence. Suppose Hendricks managed to... to harness that imploding energy. Suppose he's using it somehow to turn the villagers into happy dayers. But why? Well, if he's some sort of priest, Perhaps he thinks he's doing it for their own good. Oh, there have been enough men who said that this century. I'm not talking about this century. I'm talking about something that happened thousands of years ago. Something that keeps repeating itself. In the beginning was the star. And this star was some sort of god. Oh, yeah. Hendrix Supernova, Ursa XB1. The great bear. Bear, bear worship. Hendrix said it was one of the oldest forms of religion. Perhaps it had some sort of benign power. But then, when the supernova became a black hole, the power was reversed. And the priests use it to extract, well, something. Man's ability to think for himself, the quality that makes him human. So that's what goes on in the Hendrix's peculiar dining room. And whenever XB1 is in alignment with the sun. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Being in the constellation of the Great Bear, that'd be fairly frequent. Daily, probably. You'd still need split-second timing to predict the moment of alignment. Well, that would explain the computer you found in the crypt of the church. And all the digital clocks throughout the house. No, you need something far more accurate than that. Oh, perhaps there's a master clock somewhere. Sending out signals to the rest? Well, it's possible. Quartz? No, it's not accurate enough. Atomic. Molecules... F no, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Aged brain grinds exceeding slow. Hendrik caught you in the crypt, right? You said you saw equipment, machinery. The vent was making you choke, making your eyes water, right? That's right. Smelt trouble. Ammonia. You smelt ammonia in the crypt. Yes. Mm. The atomic clock is sometimes controlled by the ammonia molecule. That's where he keeps it. Dad, if we could alter... No, it's impossible. Are you sure? Atomic clocks can't be altered. Nothing can change the ammonia molecule. And that's why they keep such super accurate time. All these digital clocks must be driven by a master signal. Mm -hmm. Can't we interrupt it? I mean, feed in extra pulses. So they'll gain time. So will we. We'll get Henry to process us before the black hole's in position up there. So we stay as we are. That is our way out. <laughs> this must be the junction box. Feeds down to the central heating system. Yes, I shall want the oscilloscope and the oscillator. Wonder what's happened to our luggage. It's in the car. Unless. Unless what? Well, Hendrick's expecting us to stay. Perhaps he's had it brought into the house. Come on. Everything ready? Indeed, sir. Keep them well up to time, won't you? Nothing must go wrong. <coughs> Come on! <coughs> right, what does it look like? 200 volts at... 55.2. It's a square wave. A square wave? So it can't be a main signal. Right. The atomic master clock must be driving the digitals. Mm. Now, Hendrix said dinner was in 55 minutes. Can you remember from when? 1949. It's now 2015. Mm. Gives us about half an hour. Mm. Less. You got a pencil? Yes. One of yours, I'm afraid. Now, I want five minutes extra. Work out what frequency we need. 
Dad, yeah. talking of Versa Major, early man worshipped the great bear, right? Right. Did you know the Gaelic word for bear is math? Get it? Maths. I looked it up. Had to be finished. We need a 64.1 hertz signal. This gives us just under five minutes in the next half hour. Mm. I hope that's enough. Uh, six, six, four, four, nine, six, 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 Twelve seconds game. Matt. Gravity's so great, not even light particles can escape. But whatever it is, this energy doesn't start there. It comes from here. So the dish here, the circle, is a transmitter. Well, transmitting what? Evil. Or Hendrick's concept of evil. The capacity to do wrong. <laughs> the priest's sacrifice to his god. Now, hold on a minute. Where's the power source? Where does he get the power for the transmission? Do you remember the night I discovered that the ley lines all led up to this house? Ley lines? They bring the power. Psychic power to the circle. A pagan storehouse of energy. Dinner is served. What an extraordinary room. Most people do. In what way, extraordinary? What about my throne? An unusual piece, don't you think? Splendid. But it's exactly the sort of thing I would have expected a man of your conceit to have chosen. You think I'm conceited? I think you have an exaggerated sense of your own importance. I'm sorry, but you really are so predictable. Even Matty, I can tell you exactly what your next move will be. Really? You'll sit on your throne between Dad and me and tell me that the table acts as a transmitter, focusing psychic energies gathered by the stone dish of the circle. Well, let's see if you're right, shall we? Bon appétit. My children. Another village ceremony. Don't you think you're overdoing them a bit? There are many just now, during the summer solstice. The time of ancient magic. The rituals are important. Traditions are very strong in this part of the country. Do you still practice human sacrifice? Crude and unnecessary. The methods of earlier times are much more civilized. Methods of what? Purging the community of sin. The task of a priest. Accepting the burden. Taking it on one's own shoulders. Anger of fire. Fire. 
fire of speech, breath of knowledge, render us free from harm. Return to us the innocence that once we knew. Complete the circle. Make us at one with nature and the elements. It is time. Arise, my children. I commune and identify with the forces of nature. Your sin is my sin. Your guilt is my guilt. You are free. I have fulfilled my function. You are happy? So happy. Happy. Happy day indeed. My flock is cleansed. My task is done. Take them outside. When you join the circle, your initiation will be complete. You will be happy ones. Master, they are still impure. The circle is broken. Your protection is gone.
What are you up to, boy? Die! You're alive! Alive? Of course I'm alive. Thought I was dead, did you? Thought I had no more use for this place. We came because it's safe, remember? Safe? What is this? Some kind of riddle? In a way. No time for riddles, got my work to do. All these knives got to get sharpened, see? Whose is that? That? Belonged to my father, that did. And his father before him. But... Where are the rabbits? The pheasants? Uh, you are right, boy. Die? I die. I'll be off with you. And take him with you. Dad. It's died. Get back to your cottage and leave me to my work. You know our side. You know our cottage. No friend of mine, Professor Brake. No knives for thee to sharpen, ever. You know us? Yes, I know you. Die! Come on, Matt. Professor, Master Matthew, where have you been? We've been so worried. Oh, Mrs. Smythe, you can cancel that call. They're back, safe and sound. Adam, <laughs> the car was still there this morning, outside the cottage, luggage and all. We've been worried to death. What happened? It's a long story. I'm not quite sure. Are you still determined to leave us? If we can. I'm glad we have such a hold on you. It's been nice. For me too. Goodbye, Matt. Yes, bye. Sandra would be furious she's missed you. According to her, you're the best in the class. The others must be very backward. Mrs. Crabtree, go back. Did it happen, or didn't it? I don't know, Matt. I just don't know. Perhaps there was another circle beside the stones. What? Time. Perhaps that's circular too. You mean it, it might all happen again one day? It may already be happening to the people inside the time trap. <laughs> Do you want to go back and find out? What I want is a sandwich. <laughs> oh, don't tell me. Peanut butter. Strawberry mousse, gherkin, cold and syrup.
Ah, Mr. Link, Sir Joshua Lytton. Morning, sir. Pleasant drive? Delightful. Can't tell you what a relief it is to get out of London. You couldn't find a nicer part of the world to retire to than this. Ideal. I believe I shall be very happy here. Uh, come inside, won't you? Uh, we've done a little bit of destruction. 